guys, my name is Nikki, and I am a watercolor artist. Um, I also work with oils, but um, that is for another day. So today, I'm going to be talking you through my process, um, or just kind of the things that I'm thinking about as I work, and a little bit about the work. Um, so as you can see, I work very small and detailed. And if you guys um, hear me stop talking at any time in the video, it's because I have to concentrate really hard. Like right now. So, um, all of these little things that I do, I'm going to try and just kind of tell you guys what I'm doing. And hopefully it'll help you when you guys take on your own watercolor projects at home. Um, just need to stop talking. Um, so anyways, this is Wrigley Field. Right now, um, I'm working on sort of the middle ground of this painting. The foreground is done. When I paint with watercolor, um, I work from front to back, um, as far as the imagery goes. So, for example, when I work with oil, um, I do the opposite. I work from back to front. And if you guys see the light change dramatically, it's because I'm working next to a window. Um, I don't have a ton of, like, good daylight in my house, but I do what I can. And, um, so it's always best to paint in daylight because you're going to get the tourist colors. So, um, yeah, the sun just came back out, yay. But, um, so anyways, I work from front to back with watercolor. So that's why the foreground is all finished. And, um, now we're kind of working on those in-between spots. So when I'm painting, I'm pretty much just focusing on shapes. Um, and kind of seeing the shapes as I'm painting. I do work from a photograph. Um, I photograph all of my scenes multiple times. Um... You know, I go there over the course of a few days and take a bunch of pictures at different times. And then I kind of compose um, in Photoshop the scene that I want to paint. And I actually um, work from a bunch of different photos as I'm working on the project. And I put different people in different places. And it's very stitched together. But it does give you... Um, for this collection, kind of the most ideal picture. Um, that's what I'm going for. It's kind of the nostalgia of, in this case, going to a game or, you know, whatever the memory is. I also do, like, cities and universities. So um, the theme for this collection is nostalgia. So I want the pictures to look... Um, just sort of ideal and a lot of energy and emotion and almost like a memory captured um, in one painting. And as you can see, I work really, really, really small, you guys. Um, I don't even know. I'm going to try and get a better um, setup so that you can see closer as I work. But I... Jeez, the light. Uh um, as you can see, I work, I put, like, dots of color in, um, and part of that is just my style. Part of it is that I really do believe, like, um, the qualities and details, and that's true in a lot of things. Like, you know, if I paint a thousand details at the end of the painting in the picture, I mean, it's really going to look super crisp and clean and pop, and it's going to be interesting to look at, so I paint so, so small, um, and it also just kind of relaxes me, so if I stop talking, it's because I have to concentrate on the tiny dots. But yeah, as you can see, um, it gives everything a lot of dimension, and, um, I like hyper-realist paintings, and I have always gravitated towards that style. Um, so that's kind of how I paint. 
and it's very, very detailed. So with watercolor, um, I guess a little bit about the technique. Like I said before, I paint in shapes. So, um, so like as I'm doing this girl's shoe, um, I always paint like within each object, like this tiny little shoe right here. Um, I paint from dark to light. So I look at my darks first, and they'll teach you this in art school or art class or what, whatever you take in high school and middle school or whatever. But, um, I paint from dark to light, so you can see I just put that little black dot there. And the nice thing about watercolor is that I make sure my brush is a little bit dry, and then I'm going to blend that out. And it's so small. I apologize if you can't see, but this is just how I do things, so... You know, maybe it'll work for you. So that's the darkest part of the shoe. It's the inside of that shadow. And then the back of her shoe is not in the sunlight. So it's sort of like a medium. It's actually a purple tone. Um, if you do go to art school, if you're interested in painting or whatever, color theory is so huge. If you're painting realistically. Obviously the nice thing about art is that you can pretty much do whatever you want. And someone out there is going to like it. But if you're going for a realistic painting, um, you definitely need to know your color theory. Um, it's sort of like in math, knowing like multiplication and division and that kind of thing. Like it's really the building blocks to making things look real. Um, so with that being said, this girl's shoe is in shadow. Um, Almost all shadows are shades of purple because sunlight is, if you're painting like a daylight setting or something outside, the sun is um, like a yellow-orange and its opposite color is purple. So all of the shadows in this painting have some purple, some sort of purple shade in them. It doesn't mean that the entire color is purple, but um, I, yeah. I also just kind of love that I'm a total science nerd and I geek out on color theory and be like that sometimes. So now I'm starting on this shoe and um, I would like to explain how my brain is working right now but I kind of can't. So these are just like medium tones of purple because um, this shoe is a little bit more in sunlight and as you guys can see like I don't paint super super realistic like where I'm really getting down to like the laces I just capture like the gist of whatever object I'm painting and it comes through like you know if I pay attention to um, the lights and the darks of whatever object I'm painting and like really pay attention to what I was just talking about like with the the colors and the tones and the shades, um, it does end up looking really real. And, um, oh crap. Oh. Yeah, so I just put, um, what I'm doing now is I just put a tiny bit of, like, yellow-orange on the shoe because it's a little bit in sunlight. And it's really, really, um, subtle. But when I go to make my prints, I sell prints on my paintings, um, it actually will come through. Like, on the reproductions, and in the original, I mean, when you see in person. Um, but those subtle, subtle colors are what really makes the painting pop. And I layer a bunch of my colors so that it all pops. I'm sick, by the way. If you couldn't tell, I'm sure you could. But uh, hopefully I'll be better next week. I'm feeling better today, so that's good. Even though I sound disgusting. Uh, so I'm starting on this guy's shoe. He has medium gray shoes and so I kind of paint the um I said I work from dark to light and that's generally true but I don't always do like the darkest tones first sometimes I do sometimes I don't so this guy I'm just kind of laying in like the medium like base block for the shoe kind of the shape I always paint by shapes so I'm painting the shape of the shoe and you can kind of see that I'm pulling the paint. Um, 
I do that with watercolor. Like, you can't, you can kind of do that with oil, but not the same as watercolor. I like pulling the paint. Now I'm laying in the darkest shade on this guy's shoe. So it's at the very back. It's in shadow. And even though this is in shadow, this is like a brown black tone. It's not necessarily a purple. A little bit purple. So yeah, the darkest point is going to be the back of his shoe. And I get right up there to his skin line. You never want, um, like, outlines on your objects. Like, you don't want white outlines or black outlines. And even if the line, like, between his shoe and his leg becomes invisible, that's okay. Because that is how it looks in real life. I don't know if what I just said made sense, but hopefully someone understood. Alright, so I'm going to clean up that edge. So if I want to clean up an edge, like right now, his shoe's sticking out too much, um, and I want to kind of comb it down, I just clean off my brush, get it completely clean, and then I go back out from this edge, and I go back in, and I like kind of wipe it away very subtly. And now it's trimmed. So I'm pulling some more medium because it's... That shade's a little darker than I originally painted. So I'm putting in a little darker medium tones for the base of his shoe. And this, my techniques can be applied to, like, anything you paint with watercolor. Um, I just do them very, very small. Like, I paint this guy's shoe for, like, 20 minutes. And I do that on my whole painting. And then it becomes, like, this magical little world. But, um, the point I'm trying to make is that you can paint this, you can paint with this technique on anything. So, like, if you did a house like this or something, or, like, a bird or something, um, it would still work for you. Just paint with shapes. Combing it. See, I'm drooping it again, because it's bleeding. Sometimes it bleeds a little bit, but I paint so small that it's not, like, detrimental to me. I can always sort of erase. There's a little bit of room for erasing. So now I'm kind of painting um, just some of the other tones that I see in the shoe just to get the gist of what it looks like. So it's dark at the back and then a little lighter it again and see how with the shoe I kind of lost the shape a little bit at the back because if you do too much with watercolor um it does start to run and bleed and kind of go everywhere but um I'll go back in later when it's dry when I start to do this line here um and I can actually use that to my advantage and kind of paint over that little section that's not super clean right now and that'll make that go away so the bottom of his shoe is white, um, and it's a little bit in shadow. It's not totally in sunlight, so it's like a light purple shade. Um, and this is too wet, actually. I would be going back in to fix, like, the top of his shoe to make it crisp, like this guy's. But this is too wet now, so I'm going to move on to another section in a few minutes. That will be dry, and we'll go back in and fix that guy's shoe. <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick. It's gross. So anyways, um, this is pretty much how the process works. It's just like putting a little puzzle together and, um, it's very slow and it's more fun when I'm not sick, but it's relaxing. So I just put the base on this guy's shoe, um, just kind of that medium tone again, and now I'm going to put um, this, like, it is, like, a deep purple, actually, on the back of his, very back of his shoe. It's dark. It's in shadow. So, I'm going to put that tone in. My brush got bent yesterday. It sucked. But I'm gonna get a new one today. I just get my brushes at Michael's, by the way. Um, this is... 
Grumbacher. I actually really like this brush. Sometimes, um, I've talked to other artists about this. Like, my brushes. I hate when my brushes deteriorate. And, um, I haven't had any issues really with this one. Like, it's been awesome. And I've spent, like, more money on other brushes. And they have not come through for me. So, Grumbacher is my new way to go. And I think I got this one from Michael's. Um, so just a craft store, nothing crazy. And it was affordable. Um, but it did bend on me yesterday. It was my fault. I put it in, like, my little plastic bag and didn't pay attention to what was happening to it. But it's nice to have a straight-on brush. And, um, it's good to pay attention. So I should probably talk about what's going on right now. Because I just cut into the road. And some of you might be like, how did she just do that? So whenever you want to go back into um, something that's already painted, again, watercolor, like, it's very limited when you do that. There's You have a little bit of room to work with. So what you do is you clean off your brush, and you get it totally clean. And not super wet. Like, I always paint really dry. Um, so it's a little tiny bit wet. And then you just kind of, like, go over that spot a bunch of times like you saw me do just like that and it will pick up the color that was on the paper and I'm really careful with my brush and my hand so you know I'm pretty steady with it when you do that kind of thing because what will happen is if I were to do that too many times the paper will start to peel and that is the worst thing that can happen in watercolor when the paper starts to peel because um there is no coming back from that. The color sits in terrible spots and it starts to get blotchy and it definitely doesn't look real. So we try and not to do that. But that looks pretty good. His shoe is actually like too big for his um, body now. But I'm going to go back in with some of the shadow in the road and kind of fix that a little bit. So I'm going to go back in very slowly and put his shadow right in there. See how I trimmed it? So now it is not too big for his body. Uh, I still need more details. And I think the other shoe is dry enough now so we can go back and kind of crisp this up. And it will shade more light. I'm going to have to figure out a better setup if we do more of these. So that we can all see exactly what I'm doing. Ah, see? It's so much more crisp now. And remember, when I go through and put this line back here, like, that's a lot darker than that shoe. So the stripe, just like here, is really going to pop. Um, so now the last thing I'm going to do... This shoe looks pretty good, but I'm going to pop in one last dark spot on the back, like really dark, and that gives it that dimension. And that's kind of my style. Like, you can see, it's almost like very black and white, like high contrast. Sometimes I wish it wasn't like that, but um, that's how my eyes see things, so I can't do anything about that. All right, um, I'm going to take a brief break to blow my nose. We'll see you guys in a second. 